fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, let's come on the trail ahead. When the railroad construction west from Omaha got underway, there were many who, for one reason or another, were opposed to the big undertaking. Jason Killigrew represented contracting interests. When he was sent west, he was told, Killigrew, it's up to you to see that the job drops far behind the schedule. Then the builders will forfeit the contract and we can step in. So Killigrew went into the West. The leaders of his henchmen were Butch and Red. I'm almost afraid to talk to Killigrew, ain't you, Red? Well, we've done the best we could. He ought to know that. Ho there, ho boy. Ho, fellas. Ain't our fault that everything we've done was blocked by that masked man. (laughs) Jason ain't the man to take excuses. Well, here's where he hangs out. May as well go inside and get it over with. Come in. How are you, Mr. Killigrew? What do you care how I am, Red? As long as you're paid. Well, I'm And speaking of pay, it's likely to be stopped if things don't happen soon. But here I'll tell you that we've done our level best. There's a critter that's called the Lone Ranger. Never mind excuses. Mr. Killigrew, as Red's saying, this Lone Ranger... Shut up! Is... Close that door. Yes, sir. Now, open that up. Yes, Jason. Open at the top so you don't spoil the sack. All right. What's in it, Jason? You tell me. Take a look and see what you think it is. Here, Red, I'll give you a hand. Right. Sure hope this is something that'll help us. You'll see. By the way things been going, we're not getting anywhere. That lone ranger is sure in our way. I wish we could kill him off. We won't have to bother about him. That's good enough, Red. I got her open now. Just reach out a handful of what's in there and take a look at it. I got it. Hey, let me see. Great Scott. Wait, let me get this in a better light. Study it real careful. I am. What is it, Butch? Hey, that's gold. Gold ore. I never knowed much about gold ore, but this sure as thunder looks like the richest ore I've ever seen. You seen some gold ore? Uh, some, but most of the gold I got my hands on has been in dust or coins. How about you, Red? What do you think of that? Just this. If that there sack is filled full of ore as rich as that there handful, why, that sack's worth a fortune. That's what I thought you'd say. Did you get paid off for working again in the railroad? Nope. That sack could be bought for two dollars. and It'd be worth less. What? That's, uh, parietes. Fool's gold. Damn, what's the idea of trying to play a joke on us? Kill it, Drew. You better get down to serious business instead of trying to palm off fool's gold for the real thing. There's no time to waste in jokes. 
But that doggone railroad's getting farther west all the time. They're putting down four to five miles of track every Shut day. Shut up. Who's wasting time? Who's playing jokes? Well... Red, you thick skull fool. Do you think I got that stuff at the front of it? What did that you get? That fool's ghoul is going to ruin the railroad. It'll lick the company that's building the road. It'll beat the Lone Ranger. We've been fighting the railroad in the wrong way all along. I got a scheme that the Lone Ranger can't guard against. He can't fight against it. What is it? We'll take every man away from the railroad. We'll make him think there's been a gold strike. Now, what man is there that'll sweat in the sun laying tracks all day when he can stick a gold claim? Right, hey, Juniper. Maybe you got something. Me fooling away time. I never waste a move. I never waste a thought. You ought to know by this time. I got the drift of your scheme now. Good. How do we work it? Well, how's that track built? First, the graders go along and level the land. Sure, they're miles west of here now. Then the rails are moved on cars. The rails are put in place ahead of the car, and the empty car dumped off the track on the side to let the next one move up in its place. Yeah, we know that. What about it? Then, when all the cars are ahead of the ones that have been dumped, the empties are put back on the tracks and taken back as far as Omaha for another load of rails. Now then, if there's no men to lay the tracks and put back the empty cars on the rails, where'll the job be? It'll be stopped. Stopped cold. But for how long? Weeks. Where well, I'm going to send these men, it'll take them weeks to find out they've been sold short. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give a sight of cash to see the look on their faces when they learn they've gone away up to the North Country for nothing. <laughs> and the Lone Ranger won't have a chance. Of course he won't. Suppose he does learn about the scheme, which ain't likely. The men won't tell that they're going after gold. They'll keep it a secret. Each man will think he's the only one that knows about it. That's the scheme. And sneak away from the job. Even if the Lone Ranger does find out the scheme, what'll happen? He'll tell the man that there's no gold to be found. And the man will just figure that the Lone Ranger is saying that to keep him on the railroad job. <laughs> Boys, we're moving out right now. We're going to work the cafes and gambling places that have been set up to move with the railroad. Now then, here's how we work it. While the railroad was being built, cafes were thrown together overnight to handle the interests of the laborers. Then, when the working crews advanced to the west, the light buildings were torn down by their owners and moved toward the setting sun to be reassembled. Killigrew and his men dressed themselves carefully to give the appearance of prospectors. They drifted into one of the communities, entered a cafe, and sat at a table playing cards for fantastically high stakes. I'll see you 3,000 and uh, raise you five. Mm hmm. You're called. What do you got? Two pair. I got you, partner. My full house beats two pair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what's a few thousand dollars? Deal them out. I'll get you this time. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> well, did you see the stakes at that poker game in the corner? Yeah, those men sure are playing for high money. When most of the men in the cafe had been given a chance to hear the riotous game that was being played, Killigrew and his friends broke up. Later in the evening... Killigrew maneuvered himself alongside one of the railroad workers and struck up a conversation. When the quick friendship had been established, he said... Uh, you know, Lanny, I like a man that thinks of his wife and youngins the way you do. Yes, sirree, I sure admire a man like you. <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Killigrew. You know, I've got a mind to let you in on something pretty big. I uh, suppose you'd be willing to take your folks away from here? Mm, folks are back in Omaha. Oh, Sure. Well, I don't expect they'd care to leave the city. Oh, they wouldn't mind if, if I... uh, you wanted them to, huh? You know, that's what I admire. A woman that'll stick to a man. Loyalty, that's the thing. You, uh, you look like a man that could keep a secret. Me? Sure thing. How would you like to... Uh, maybe I'd better not say too much in here. Now, you've got to swear to keep mum about this if I tell you. Oh, Sure. I know where there's gold. You, you do? And take a look. Here's a sample of the arm. Good grief. There's more than a man could take out. Lenny, you come over to where I'm standing. I'll show you something that'll make your eyes pop clear out of your head. Several days passed. Jim Hudson, boss of the gang, noticed that the men were working without their usual enthusiasm. An Indian moved slowly to the side of the supervisor and 
spoke in a low voice. Uh, what matter with men? Tonto, does your masked friend notice that things aren't right? Uh, well, I'm hanged if I know what it is. Lone Rangers think trouble in there. That's trouble, all right, but I can't find out what's back of it. Every time I join a group of the men, they just stop talking as if each of them's got something on his mind. Oh. They won't tell me a thing. Oh, wait. There's a young fellow that's always been a fine worker. Lanny. Hey, Lanny. Yes, sir? Come here, will you? Come on, Mr. Hudson. Let's talk straight from the shoulder. Don't you like this job? Well, uh, I never complained about it, Mr. Hudson. Why are you planning to leave us? Who, who said I was planning to leave? Aren't you? Look, boss, I'm doing my job. Sure you are. Then what's the complaint? You won't speak up frank to me, huh? If I neglect the job, you can fire me, but I don't see that I'm neglecting it. All right, Lanny, you can go back to work. Thank you, sir. Didn't get far, did I? Uh, something wrong, for sure. Where are you going, Tonto? Me go find Lone Ranger. Get him up, scout! What in, boys? Now, we got your message, Mr. Killigrew. Yeah. I had word that there was a redskin talking to Hudson. Yeah, I seen him. Yeah, what about him? He's the partner of the Lone Ranger. He's riding right now to get the Lone Ranger. And he'll be here. He'll be here, all right. I want to make the most of his coming here. You said we needn't worry about him. We don't. He won't be able to influence the men we talk to. Well, then why are but you... if he is going to be here... Why not do away with him? Oh, think we could? We can. How? Now, the last we heard about him, he was way west of here. Yeah, that's right. It'll take the Redskin all night tonight, all tomorrow morning and part of the afternoon to get there. That means the Lone Ranger won't be here until sometime the day after tomorrow. That's figuring the Indian to ride all night without sleeping. Yep. Now, that gives us time to get the men here and tell them each to hurry if they want to get to the gold fields before the rush starts. Well, tell them <laughs> that they're to slip away tomorrow night. That's it. What if their women folks don't get here? I'll handle that. I promise to tell the women where to find them. And maybe the women will start arriving tomorrow. I hope so. I'm thinking the men will get suspicious of one another when they see the women come here. Each one will think the others have been tipped off about the That's gold. That's all right. Let them think it. It'll uh, make him in a hurry to get underway to where the gold is. Yeah, get back to the Lone Range. Oh, yes. When he gets here, the men will all be gone. <laughs> He'll be downright surprised. Then we'll tell him where he can overtake the men. He'll go there. And we'll have the chance to get him off guard out in the North Country and do away with him for keeps. That'll be it. Hey, hey, who's that? You, you hear? Mast. Lone Ranger. Steady. I won't draw a gun unless one of you draws first. How'd you get in here? The door, of course. You should never leave a door unlocked, Killigrew. I'm here to have a look at all this gold you've been showing the men. Well, now that you know all about things, what do you think you're going to do about it? Give you all the rope you want. Eh? I know what small chance I'd have to tell the men that you're making promises that don't mean anything. Most of the men are in the cafe right now. I'll go and tell them the truth. I don't expect them to believe it. You, you're going to tell them about the gold? Yes, the fool's gold. I'll take a pocket full of it with me. <laughs> the sack is full of it, huh? <laughs> Try and convince the men that it's not real gold. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell them. <laughs> Maybe you're too short-sighted to see what'll happen when you tell them, but I'm not. I know what'll happen. <laughs> don't try a shot at me. It might not be healthy for you. <laughs> Boys, let them spill what he's got. As soon as the men realize they've all been told about the gold fields, they'll start out to beat each other to them. All the Lone Ranger's going to do is to start the rush tonight instead of tomorrow night. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. 
After the Lone Ranger left Killigrew's shack, he hurried to Jim Hudson, who watched to make sure the men put away their tools at the end of the day's work. Hudson! Great Scott, you're here. I didn't know that... I was... hurried to get here, steady big fellow. Uh, luckily, I met Toto. And you know? I knew before I left Omaha. That's why I came in such a rush. Omaha? Yes. These men have been writing to their wives. They're planning to leave you. I was afraid so. Hudson, do you know of a man named Killigrew? Yeah, I know of him. Why? Isn't the shack he's living in railroad property? Sure. It's one of those we put up in a hurry. I let Killigrew use it. You know who he is? He's a writer of some sort. Said he was doing some writing about this job. Hudson, you may lose that shack. It ain't worth anything. Why? I wanted to make sure it was yours, that you were willing to lose it to keep your men on this job. I don't savvy. Now, you'll be in the cafe in half an hour. By then, the men will all be there. Look here. I'm willing to do anything you say. But why in thunder will I lose my shack? And what's the truth about Killigrew? Why are these men acting like sulking mules? You'll have all the answers very soon. I have to meet Tonto now. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Start in a little while. Uh, me no. Dan's waiting for us in Omaha. Why are you leaving there? I had to come at Silver's top speed. I didn't want Dan to travel that fast on Victor. Oh, we meet him in Omaha. Yes. I'm going to the cafe now, Tato. Killigrew is in his shack. I want you to be sure he stays there. Uh, me watch him. And there's one thing more for you to do. Now listen. In the cafe, the men who were generally so boisterous and rollicking were silent and thoughtful. Wrapped in his own thoughts, each laborer paid no attention to the silence of the others. They said little, were cautious in the way they drank, each fearful he would betray his plans to the other. Like others, Lanny tried to be casual. Uh, my wife might be coming here for a little visit one of these days, Jay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I got uh, sort of lonesome for a chance to see the kids I asked in the last letter I sent to Omaha to fetch him out here for a day or so. Now, that's an odd coincidence. What is? I reckon I must have been lonesome the same as you. I sent word to my folks, too. Oh? They might hitch up the old team and come here. Why are they bringing the team? They could come on the supply train, couldn't they? Maybe, but I didn't want to ask Hudson for a special permission for that. Oh. How are your folks coming? Oh, well... Drive in the rig. I, I didn't want to speak to Hudson either. Mm. Hey, hey, Jack, something's going on. Look, they're at the door. Well, he's masked. It's a stick up. Take it easy. This isn't a robbery. I just want to talk to you. Who is he? Why that there mask, stranger? I want to talk to all the men who work on the railroad. Well, that's us. What do you want? How many of you men have heard of Western promotion? None of you, huh? But I'll tell you something about it. It's against the railroad. The men in that outlaw group will do anything to disrupt the construction of the railroad to the Pacific. Oh, Why? Tell us more and show us proof. They want the contract after you boys fall down on the job. I can't show proof just yet, but you'll have that proof in a few minutes. One of the ringleaders of that outfit has been around here for several days. Name him. I'll name him in just a minute. He's been showing each of you men samples of ore that he called gold. He's been making each of you think that you were the only one he trusted. That surprises you, doesn't it? He gave each of you a map showing where the gold could be found and told you to get in touch with your family and head for the North Country before the rush began. How many of you did he talk to? He talked to me. Yeah, and to me. He, he, me too. he wanted to start a rush to that part of the state. Well, if everyone knows it, the sooner I get there, the better. Hold on, we'll go together. I ain't going to be beat. Stay where you are. Not me, I'm starting right now. Oh, Tell Hudson to get another man from my place. Stand aside, stranger. Stay where you are, men, wait. Get away from that door. You'll shoot him if you don't move. Stop. I'll shoot at the first gun that's drawn. Let me by get here, you... Oh, hey. Get through there, man. I'm going to finish talking to you if I have to knock down every one of you. Killigrew's a man's name. Most of you already know it. He doesn't know of any gold mine. That stuff he's been showing you is nothing but fool's gold. 
He wants you to leave here. You're talking for the railroad. You don't want us to leave. You'd say anything to keep us here. Uh, and you won't do it. I won't be kept here. I'll take a chance on Killigrew. So I. I have more to tell you. Save it. Boys, yeah. I asked Killigrew why he was telling me what he did. He said he'd already staked his claim. He wanted other claims to be staked there so there'd be a community spring up. He was trying to be careful that many got there. That's logical enough. Uh, yes, yes, right. Let's rush the mass man. Right. Yeah. Come on, rush if you dare. I have two guns and I'll use them. I'm going to convince you that I've spoken the truth if I have to fight every one of you to do it. Get back there! Now listen to me. I'll prove that stuff Killigrew showed you isn't worth a dime a pound. Look out the windows at Killigrew's cabin. It's on fire. Fire! Killigrew's place. That's it, all right. That's what I need to prove my point. Men, give me 15 minutes more. Stay with me that long and save your jobs and your future. To say nothing of the railroad. I'm counting on you. Come on and watch what happens at that fire. The Lone Ranger understood men. He turned and hurried from the cafe, knowing that for the time the threat of a rush from the vicinity had been averted. The men would stick and see what the fire at Killigrew's place brought out. Every man in the cafe followed the masked man as he hurried on foot toward the flames that were leaping high into the air. Killigrew, Butch, Red, and the rest of the gang had left the burning building to stand outside and watch. Killigrew, who started it? I don't know. Sprung up all at once. Where's that sack of gold ore? What? You can still go into the house and get it. The flames haven't reached the door. Not me. I thought the stuff was so valuable. Don't you want it? Hey, that. It's where that came from. You hear that, boys? He doesn't want the sack. You've all seen it. You've been told how precious it is. I said there was a lot more. How about you, men? Red, you can go and get the sack. Killigrew will give it to you if you get it. Won't you? Well, I... Or uh, you, Butch? You mind your own business. He don't need it bad enough to risk his neck to get it. All right, then. If you don't care about getting the sack, I'll get it. Well, hold on. If it's too dangerous to go in after... There's not much risk. I'll be right out. The Lone Ranger dashed into the burning building, fumbled in the smoke a moment, and then located the sack of fool's gold. He came from the place carrying it over his shoulder. Meanwhile, the boss, Hudson, saw every move and heard every word from the nearby train that was waiting to start east. Good thing he's out of there. I thought the roof or the walls might collapse. He knows what he's doing, Manny. Well, I hope so. He's got a plan, Manny. He said he'd prove to... Look, the Lone Ranger's holding the sack up for the men to see. And look at Killigrew. See, you could have brought it out without much risk. Whatever. In fact, when the fire first started, you could have taken the sack with you if you thought it had any value. My life is more important than gold ore. Boys, I want to ask you just one thing. How many of you know the test for real gold? I do. Well, there are chemicals, mainly acids, which will not affect pure gold, but will affect fool's gold. You've heard of that? Yes, I have. Me too. I have a bottle of liquid here in my pocket. While there's still plenty of light from that burning shack, we'll put some of the liquid on the stuff that Killigrew called gold and see what happens. Oh, wait. That's my ore. Yours? Yes, hand it over. But I thought it wasn't important to you. It's important enough. My life comes first. I'll take that now, and thanks to you for bringing it out. I think these men will have something to say about that. Boys, don't you think you should pay me for bringing it out of the fire? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Give him a reward, Killigrew, then let him go his way. Well, that's fair enough. Here's a hundred dollars. I'll just take a handful of this ore for my reward. You'll take the hundred dollars in cash or nothing. But a handful of ore isn't worth that much. You heard what I said? Are you afraid to let me make the test? You do what Killigrew says, stranger. Here, boys. Watch the test. Killigrew doesn't seem to want it made. Get your head out of that sack. The rest of you keep back, guns. Uh, you heard what he said? Keep him covered, boys. Keep him covered. We got him. Look here, Killigrew. The way your partner's pulled guns on us looks mighty suspicious to me. Yeah, me too. I don't care how it looks. That masked man as much as called me a crook. And I don't have to take a test like he wants to make. You know very well that these men will see that you've been bluffing. If I put some of the liquid from this bottle on that ore. I say, make Killigrew test the ore. That's it, man. Uh, oh, covered. We'll shoot the first man that starts anything. I told you where, where there was gold to be found. Don't matter to me if you go there or not. That's what I get for trying to be friendly with you. Every one of you turns on me. Well, we're leaving here right now. 
You can go on being slaves to the railroad if you want. All right, back off, boys. We'll get to the horses. If anyone tries anything, we'll shoot. I'm satisfied that the masked man was right. Keep back, I tell you. We'll shoot if you come for us. Huddle. Right. My hand, my arm. My shoulder. Great guns, what shoot? Close in, grab them, boys. Hey, you're hurt, my busted arm. Hang on, will you? That's enough from you, Kilgrew. Another time. Don't think a man's gun is out of action when it's in leather. Never in all my born days did I see fast as Or straighter. He and the red skin, they blasted the guns clean out in those crooks' hands. Horses ready. All right, Tonto. Here, you fellows. Put this bottle of water on a shelf in the office. Let it remind you to let nothing interfere with your job. We'll test the next fool's goal we see. We... Hey, you said water. Yes, this is just water. It wasn't time to get real chemicals. Well, uh... <laughs> then you took those crooks in twice the same time. I'm traveling to <laughs> Omaha. You hold these men until the law comes. I think when they've been made to talk, you'll be able to round up the whole gang. Omaha? Hey, tell my wife to stay there. And tell mine the same. Hey, I'm I'm I'll deliver all of your messages. Steady, big fella. <laughs> Come on, Toto. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Pull, pull away. Pull away. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.